you, John, for being here. I really appreciate your time. Always good to be on Sino TV. Thank you. So, John, there have been quite some um, racial discrimination-related issues lately toward Asians. I mean, there have always been, but lately it seems like some issues just got really magnified by the media. And yourself have been invited by CNN twice to talk about this issue. And what do you think? Is it because mainstream media suddenly pay more attention to racial dis discrimination Asians are facing now? I think that's true. I think that is the case. In, in the past 150 years where Asian Americans have had a history here in the United States, there, ha there have always been challenges with regard to racism and discrimination. And I think in, in the recent years, I don't necessarily think that there's an increase. But I think that Asian Americans are speaking up more loudly and more vocally through letters, phone calls, sometimes demonstrations, and lots of emails. And that has captured more attention from the mainstream media. And I think uh, while I would, like to, I would like for there to be no incidents of racism and discrimination, if they unfortunately do happen, I think that it's good not to ignore it. And I think it's a positive sign of progress for our community that the, the mainstream media is picking up on it. So let's talk about this Rosie O'Donnell incident. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, she already apologized for you know, the stereotypical caricature of Chinese on right. the ABC show, The View. But she also said she might make the similar mistakes in the future. Do you accept this kind of apology? I accept the apology. Rosie O'Donnell, she has a history of saying pretty stupid things on TV. And I, I never even asked for her apology. I, I, I have wrote, written a letter to Barbara Walters, the, the person who's really in charge of that show, mm -hmm. to let Ms. Walters understand that this Ching Chong bit is highly, highly offensive to Asians. And uh, you know, never asked for an apology from Rosie O'Donnell. Obviously, Ms. Walters got the message from the community. And, and now understands that Ching Chong is very, very offensive, and that, uh, and so she made Rosie O'Donnell apologize. If if she if O'Donnell does it again, then we'll be on top of Miss Walters again. <laughs> Sadly, though, Rosie O'Donnell is making fun of Chinese people. It seems like there's way more mainstream coverage than the Asian media. What do you think of that? Well, that's a very good point. I think that um, there is. The, the Asian media and uh, uh, people who are, I guess, first generation and mostly Chinese speaking Asian Americans, including my parents and many of the people in the, in the community that I represent here in New York, many of the first generation may not fully understand how offensive the Ching Chong is. But those of us in the second generation, myself included, who grew up here, I mean, that Ching Chong is so offensive because we've all been through it. When I was growing up, as early as when I was seven or eight years old, I got my first Ching Chong on the street. And the problem with it is that it's not just the words. If it stopped at the words, no big deal. But my own experience and the experience of everybody in, in my generation has always been, you, you know, you're walking down the street, minding your own business, and someone decides to say, ching chong, ching chong. And so you try to ignore it, like I did. Just keep walking. The ching chong gets louder. And you keep ignoring it. And all of a sudden, people throwing paper or spitting balls at you. And before you know it, you know, you keep ignoring it, and then they come up, they walk behind you, and they maybe start pushing you. So the Ching Chong taunt, it never stops at that. It's always the beginning of something far more serious. And just, just a few months ago in New York, we had another very serious incident where, where two Asian American teenagers were beaten very badly to the point of being sent to the hospital. And one of them really, I mean, the way he was pounded on his face, he's lucky to be alive. And so that, that's why, you know, when, when O'Donnell got on national TV, a popular program, 
like The View, and a program that has credentials because it's a Barbara Walters production. Mm -hmm. when, when that kind of taunt, and it wasn't just like Ching Chong for one second. She kept going on and yeah. on and on and on. And then at the end of that segment, there was a gong. So that was a, that was a planned production. Mm -hmm. We cannot allow that to go without a response. Because then it sends a message to the entire nation. And in fact, I got, th there was feedback to my office from all over the, the country, from non-Asians, saying, that, oh, you know, what's the big deal about Ching Chong? It's just words. And because Rosie O'Donnell said it, it was somehow deemed acceptable. And that's why we had to respond to it immediately. And, and I'm happy that O'Donnell apologized. Uh, you know, it wasn't the, the best apology that, that anybody could have offered. But uh, nonetheless, she, she said it. And the point is, it, the important thing here is not that she said sorry, but that Ms. Walters and more Americans understand how offensive mm -hmm. this term is and why it's offensive. Because it always leads to something more serious and something more violent. Yeah, I really appreciate your action in this incident. I think really we need more people like you to stand up for the Asian. Well, you know, I think that um, I, I'm always there to stand up, but we're seeing more and more and more people stand up as well. I mean, this rec just last week, the incident where Babies R Us decided to, yeah. to deny their contest award mm -hmm. because so of some outrageous wrongful thinking you know mm -hmm. someone was not thinking clearly at babies or us that that um, organization of Chinese Americans spoke out uh, John Wang at the Asian American Business Development Center uh, Albert Wang who is a community activist right here in, in New York uh, people spoke out and results were secured in this case baby babies are decided to give the baby the the award mm -hmm. and so uh, so my goal is uh, uh, to to stand up and speak out as much as possible, but also to encourage as many people in New York and across the country to do exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. That's really good. And for the babies of us, uh, I think they claim it's because the mom has illegal status, not so much as her being an Asian. Do you think that's really the reason behind that? I do not know what the status of the mom is. Mm. The, the, the fact is that Babies R Us promoted the first baby contest mm -hmm. all over the country. They encouraged hospital staff to call them in. Mm. This was a case where the, the mother and the father of Yuki, they had no idea. Mm. They didn't know anything about the contest. Yeah. They didn't ask for anything. They're not after the money. Mm -hmm. The hospital did it. And so once the hospital did it, uh, number one, it raises some questions about what kind of, what kind of personal information is actually being passed mm -hmm. to, to a company like Babies R Us. Yeah. And secondly, for Babies R Us to deny this because of the mother, Babies R Us was not holding a first baby. Uh, their, their contest was not about the mother of the first baby of 2007. It was just about the first baby. Mm -hmm. They, you know, they. This is part of a, a coordinated advertising campaign. This is not like a charity from Babies R Us. It's yeah. an advertising campaign, mm -hmm. and they use the baby's pictures in all their promotional materials. Mm -hmm. They're not showing pictures of the mother. They're showing pictures of the baby. So focus on the baby. That's what it's about. Why bring the mother into this? Mm -hmm. it has nothing to do with that. It's really sad. Always things like this keep on happening. Well, they they happen, but I I'm of the firm belief that they happen less when we speak out about it. So in the act of speaking out about it, it seems like they're more serious and they're more frequent. But I believe that by speaking out about it, like in this case, it will make sure that companies out there, other companies, think more clearly about what they're saying. I don't think in this case Babies R Us intended anything bad or mm. negative. It was just a comment that, oh, well, technically that doesn't follow the rules or, or whatever like that. Mm. They weren't really thinking of, of how, how this would be perceived and how it would 
it would label the baby girl as a, a second class person for the rest of her life. Mm. They just weren't thinking about that. So hopefully <laughs> companies will think more clearly before they uh, jump to conclusions or make, make erroneous judgments. Thank you. Then we'll take a break after this. Thank you.